are live. So let me go ahead and uh, do a quick share here. So you still there, right, Johnny? All right, all right, cool, cool. This is usually the hard part here because now I got my whole systems loaded down with the live feed. All right, so you guys are just joining us. We're just going to do a quick share, and then we'll jump on the show. So uh, let us know where you guys are at. Um, got an awesome show today. All right, so love to hear. Hey, Bao. Love to hear. Hey, dude, what's going on, man? Talk to you for a while. What's up, Jam Hong? Jam Hong. Let's see here. Share to our favorite group, which is more real estate investors. Because this is real real estate related topic today. Hey, my <laughs> no, you are not late. I am late. <laughs> uh, I see here. We'll get going in just about two minutes here. Let me do a quick share and we're off. So um from Denver, what's up, Denver? Denver in the house. Let's tag. Text somebody here. Really need an assistant here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's up with that? I should I should not be doing this myself. I really should have an assistant. Anybody wants to be my assistant? Message us. <laughs> <laughs> One more share here. Um, hope everybody's doing good tonight. Um, got an awesome show. Um, and I figured uh, I'll bring my buddy on the line because we were talking earlier about investing. And I'm like, hey, man, why don't you share you know, what we're going to talk about? you know to everybody here because it's it's good stuff right so it's good stuff and uh, i'm sure everybody wants to hear about it too so um uh but he decided to join us so that's that's gonna be cool and it's gonna be really exciting to talk about this so hope you guys are excited let us know where you guys are at i'd love to know and i think i'm live on my site I believe. Yes, I am. Almost there. Hey, what's up, Vong? Hey, we got Lau, and then we got we got Blaine in the house, right? Blaine, Minnesota. Is that right? <laughs> we got Woodbury, huh? Woodbury in the house. Uh, still here in India. I right, somebody's there in India. <laughs> all right let's go ahead and start uh thanks guys for joining us you know this mo hustle show 43 finally back you know like i said um i had to take care of some few stuff before i actually get back and do my show and took care of it you know so it's been a while since i uh, was uh doing this type of stuff uh like coming to you guys sharing information but uh if i took care of what i need to take care of and that was my taxes so you guys wanted to know <laughs> my 2019 taxes you know so finally done with my taxes i'm a little still almost far behind on my 2020 taxes so i gotta finish that up too so you guys see me disappear for a little bit <laughs> uh that could be it too but uh yeah that's the reason why uh we were a little bit uh uh gone for a while but uh you know uh decided hey i need to jump back on i got a lot of people that um that was on the list so I didn't want to lose those people that you know, like, hey, he's been gone for like a few uh, few months. Uh, so uh, here we are, here we are jumping in. So Johnny is kind of um, uh, the person joining us today is Johnny, a good friend of mine. Uh, so um, uh, he, we did a few seminars, a free, uh, a few real estate seminars together. I think three, and then I, um, so uh, it's been he's been a good friend of me uh, of mine. And uh, today we're just going to talk about, you know, uh, how how to how to borrow money for Airbnb, 
and then we'll talk a little about how he got started and then um a little bit about how what he thinks the market's going um but all of this real estate stuff and interest rate stuff so uh without without waiting let me bring him on the on the line here so let me pop up hey what's up johnny hey what's up <laughs> all right so hey man thanks for them's coming in man let me uh let me put your name up let me put my name up and make it look good and everything here so how about that all right so hey appreciate you coming on um it's been a while right i think we last i think we saw each other like uh what was it last month or two months ago it was like june or something did not july i think july, july? okay yeah. cool so uh where you where are you from johnny uh minnesota <clears throat> so i'm i'm from brooklyn park so basically in the twin cities in minnesota cool cool so uh those of you guys in brooklyn park where minnesota give some thumbs up for this guy <laughs> so so yeah we saw each other uh, a few months ago and it was just a quick hi and bye but um and then uh I, I, earlier today we talked about uh he posted something in my uh real estate investors group um yeah. about loans and stuff and i messaged him and then uh he was telling me the requirements i'm like holy cow these are great requirements for uh, for a loan on how to get um for airbnb so we kept going i'm like man this is great information that you know him and me are sharing so i figured uh i'll just bring everybody you know um on the on this live thing and you know if you guys kind of see how we how the questions i ask him and stuff like that and then we can kind of do like a newbie kind of thing so you guys can see how you know you know how i look i ask a person or a lone person uh these type of questions so here we go right so uh so um thanks johnny for joining and coming on here and uh let's let's get started saying hey how did you get started you know in this yeah yeah so yeah thanks thanks for inviting me man um I'm, I'm glad i'm able to join you with this and hopefully we can get out to the the community right um so what happened was um i've like i wanted to get into banking because i just wanted to get into money right you yeah. know you, you grow up poor or whatever so i got into banking and i worked my way up in uh was it uh before taking on this position when i came down i was still uh i was still with us bank right and so i came down i was with us bank i was a underwriting manager over there um uh, managing the wealth division and so great job loved it but um while i was down in florida right right after the we had met on the way back to my timeshare right um yeah. I get a text from this friend, right? And she had opened up a brokerage and she was like, hey, I need your help. I need you to come on. And I was like, well, if you pay me right, I'll, I'll be there. And she was <laughs> like, hey, so what do you want? You know, and uh, yeah. we kind of chatted and uh, she's been doing. So her big thing is actually out in uh, Tennessee. We work in the Smoky Mountain area and we do all, uh, a lot of the Tennessee short term rentals out there. And so I knew that it was a big deal and I wanted to jump in and uh, just, you know, help people out well, for one, you know, just uh, help her out and make some money. And then the other one is uh, really to be able to bring this to the community. Right. Because I, I know a ton of people and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that could use the money. Um, a big deal to a lot of the people that I know is financial freedom. So um, that's what made me move. And that, that's why I decided to shipped over to uh the mortgage shop that's awesome so so those of you guys don't know um when when you talk about the smoky mountains right and, t and tennessee and stuff like that you know uh, since i'm in the airbnb business that's like a huge market where they're making tons of money over there so if your friends contacting you <laughs> there's money no. over there right <laughs> yeah there, there's it, it's crazy it's crazy between yeah. that and uh the the new place we're going to is uh panama city yeah in florida yeah so, yeah. yeah so That's... so for you guys tennessee is like uh almost like number it's tennessee and like um florida like neck and neck to see who makes the most money in airbnb and stuff Absolutely. like that so what his the, his market right now is yeah that's part of why you know she's asking for help <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure <laughs> so sure. so that's kind of where we're at you know and i think uh 
yeah, I think you mentioned it earlier when we we're talking like one of the guys was making like how much money in the in the Rocky Mountains? Like they're grossing the like a hundred to hundred and twenty on their properties. And so if you if you just think about it, um, like I don't know what your like what you net, but if you're grossing a hundred to hundred and twenty, um you're you're making out pretty good, right? I think in Florida, most of them gross between forty to sixty per mm-hmm. per year and they're doubling that out in the smoky mountains yeah that's that's about right i mean i'm i'm netting about you know 40 ish something like that so uh the gross is like what seventy thousand something okay. like that so uh wow 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 so if you guys have any questions uh make sure you comment below and we'll hit your we'll hit up your questions too uh on this so we're just starting so if you guys just joining uh we're gonna talk a little about you know, the Airbnb sector and how to get money for um, Airbnb rentals. So, so why are we talking about like loans for Airbnb? Is there a different type of, you know, t- type of loan for Airbnb? Yeah, absolutely. So you can go your traditional route to get your first house, right? You can go your, your traditional route, you get your first, second home in the area, you start to kind of make money on it. And then you, when you go try to get the second one, they're going to say, you got to go through an investment uh, process right and uh so the thing is that um when you th- there's a point in time you'll max out too and then you're gonna have to go to someone like me right and we have different programs different products that we can put you in that allows you to uh make the the most out of your money so for example um let's say you have uh, an investment property we we can do like 15 percent down on investment properties right uh through um through something like a retail product that we have right so your normal traditional mortgage but it's it's a 15 percent down product up to um what so today they just came out with what the new um conforming limits are and they're they're boosting them up to six hundred and twenty five thousand well let's not even go that far yet so let's just say why you know because and i can just kind of uh bump it in there say hey the reason why is like some of them if you tell them you're gonna do like a short-term rental they're they're like we can't give you a loan right for short right right absolutely you know because it's they're like that's something that's different for them yeah so it's kind of it's it's really hard to find like financing for a short-term rental so you gotta have to do like some kind of like creative financing, financing. All, that, yeah. <laughs> all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, so, but in your case here, you have a a product here for short term rental. We call short term rental. We call it Airbnb. The kind of same thing, right? Yeah. 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 So you have a product for that. So that's why I, me and him were talking earlier today about it because. Because when I first started, it, it was really hard to find any sort of like um, like a loan person to say, hey, yeah, we'll finance your rental, you know, um, and, you know, what are you, you're, you're doing short term? Oh, no, we don't do that stuff. You know, sorry, you know, and then you're like, ah, so it's like it gets so hard. But like he has a product that, that does it and it's really cool. So uh, I, I guess that's the only reason why I'm, I'm trying to get at that question is. Yeah, you can't just go to like a loan person and say, "Hey, I'm going to do a short term, uh, short term rental. Can you finance me?" They're going to be like, uh, mo- "Majority of the time, right? You, they're going to be like, they're just going to turn you away." So right, right. After you get your first one, right? After you get your first second home, right? Then uh, <laughs> yeah, they they move over and they say, "Hey, you can't do that anymore, and we're not we're not going to finance you because one, uh, it's a short term rental, so they can't uh, consider the income, right?" They won't they won't consider the income because they don't know if you're actually going to make money on it right uh the thing is that right now airbnb and brbo and uh those guys they've designed a system that allows you to uh make good money and the, the thing is that like places like tennessee and orlando um this th- this type of business has always um existed right even before they had these uh, websites and such there there's been people that vacations out in florida and rents rents it out for a certain period of time or a short term time, um, but no lender lends on lends on that kind of stuff, right? You don't you don't get the lenders are going to be like we can't use that income. It's not consistent. We're just not we just don't want anything to do with it. 
And so it makes it really, really tough for you to be able to go out there and try to get money for it. Yeah, cool. So yeah, uh, so that so that was that, <laughs> I know we took it a little too long on that, but uh, that was the reason why. So if you guys are looking to do an Airbnb business, that's you know you can't just go to any store. So so we got the guy right here, one of the guys. <laughs> <laughs> so you want so you want to start doing this store business? Johnny's the guy, right? Reach out to Johnny. So uh, so let let's go. So let's so what are like what are the requirements, right? So how do you get started? Like so if let's say hey. Johnny, you know, I found this deal. Like, what do you need from me, like, to get started, like, this particular fin financing for this particular loan? Yeah, so typically you would, would you would come out. I would make you fill out an application, right? I mean, we can do all of this online nowadays, right? Uh, you would fill out an application. Then after you fill out an application, we'll put credit and we'll ask you where you're going to get your down payment from. And then uh, we go from there. So the the specific product that um, that China was, was talking about was one that uh, the income from the property will be used to qualify the property, right? So we won't be using your personal income. Uh, the product allows you to close in your LLC if you have an LLC, or it allows you to close in your personal name. So um, this product it it's designed so that um, and and plus it doesn't have a limit to how many properties you can buy. Right. So um, these are some of the things that when you come to a lender, we're going to say, hey, we need to know your assets. We need to know your your credit. We need to know that you you haven't had any forbearances. And if you have, then <laughs> um, <laughs> if you have, then you got to have to pay it all up, get it caught up and uh, get, yeah, get yeah. Out of forbearance. Oh, man, we're laughing there because uh, Johnny knows I, <laughs> I'm in forbearance. <laughs> I came, I came out of it. All right, I came out of it. Right, there's, there's, you know, so we'll leave us that. <laughs> but well, the, okay. the thing is that, like, for us, we allow you to be in forbearance if you're, if it's for your personal home. Yeah. But on all the investment properties, dude, if you're, right. if we're a lender and we're gonna lend you money and <laughs> <laughs> you're not paying, it's not gonna work out. I mean, like, uh, I assume a lot of these people are also right. landlords, and so you know, you get the feeling, right? So just just no no investors left left behind you know forbearance right what is that so you know the, the, those are the newbies that are joining the call they're probably like what are, what are they laughing about you know what is the forbearance <laughs> so the the forbearance process normally a forbearance is like when someone just leaves their home and gives it back to the bank kind of deal right and that means that uh, uh, before uh, COVID people really didn't do forbearances. Um, they normally did foreclosures where they, they would just take the home away from you. Um, yeah. The forbearance came out because uh, the government had allowed people to go into forbearance without making payments. You can keep your house and uh, your credit won't be impacted, right? Your FICO won't be impacted. Right. Um, and so that being said, a lot of people, you know, as soon as COVID hit, they might have lost their job, whatever, where the government was hoping that everybody recovers and that you're going to be able to catch up with the payments. Right. And so that's why a lot of lenders were given the ability to go into forbearance, um, not make payments. And, and, that's, uh, and I'll jump in there just to uh, just quick yeah, like example. Right. So kind of want to relate to like your terminology and then kind of like related to uh, real life stuff. Right. So yeah. So, it, in my situation, I had like five rentals. So, um, so during COVID came in, I was like, "Holy cow!" You know, uh, they were closing off Florida. You know, nobody was able to stay at Airbnb. So I'm like, I have to funnel out money for to, you know. So it was like zero income coming in. Nobody can stay at these rentals. So, so I, I was like, oh, I had to figure out some sort of strategy. So I went into forbearance because I was losing just like. Out of the five rental, my Airbnb rental was like thirty thousand a month, right? So, wow. who, who has thirty thousand in their pocket, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, yeah, that's crazy. So thirty thousand, I'm like, dude, I have to stop bleeding somehow. So I, I took my rentals to uh, forbearance, right? So that's kind of why. So just so you guys know, like, what, how do you, how does that work? So I took it to forbearance, so I, I wouldn't have to go into foreclosure on that. So, so. You know, it stopped the bleeding, you know, the money bleeding for a while until until everything opens up again. So that's the reason why. So, <clears throat> so going back, um, so like, 
requirements, right? So I come to you and say, hey, you know, we were talking about, so I was talking about like, hey, you know, I was looking at some beach rentals for Airbnb, right? And they're like, we can give you this this scenario, right? This deal was like a million dollars, right? So mm -hmm. I come to, hey, Johnny, what do you need for me to get this process rolling? You know, how I can get money? Because I can't just go to a traditional, you know, what, you know, kind of like a traditional loan person. I come to you. What do you need from me? You, you're saying that you know I fill out an application. Um, yeah. You're gonna check my credit. Is there is there a credit score that you're looking at? So we look at about uh, 720 is kind of our average. We can do anything from uh, uh, 680 and up, but then it's gonna require more money down, right? So okay. each, yeah. So if you got more money down, like so, 680 probably requires about 30 percent down versus your 20 percent um and then of course it impacts your rate too right so the lower your fico is the higher your rate is okay. um like so when we were talking and i was saying that if your fico is around 720 the rate's going to be around uh 5.66 right and that's higher than your normal your normal traditional uh, wow. loan that you get mortgages on but the thing is, is that these are businesses right so um this product is a hybrid product that we have and we treat it similar to um, to that of a commercial product. And so the rates are gonna be a little bit higher. And like I said, you can't get an infinite amount of rental property, like short-term rental properties, except through these type of programs, right? Yeah. And just to show you guys, like <clears throat> like my, one of my loans for one of my Airbnb was like six something, 612 or something, six six point twelve. So he's, so he's going, he's throwing in that 5.66. I think my score was like five or oh, seven. It was above some 20. So, you know, yeah. you're already being my beating that rate out. So that's pretty cool. So yeah. um, what was the other thing? Um, the down payment, you know, I guess what you're saying is the down payment from 30% to 20%, right? Um, and I think the, the one thing that was pretty cool that you just mentioned, and we, I didn't catch that earlier, was the um, the income. Like I think right. you treat this like a commercial loan, right? Yeah, yeah. So the the way it works is you don't actually have to like. So there's a lot of investors out there, and all of their money are stuck in these properties, right? And so if they're not working like a full time job, like 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 uh, I don't know, most people they work a full time job, and so they can use their W two income, right? But if you're not you're not working, everything's inside of these properties, and you're continuing to move money, right? Yeah. then it doesn't show on your tax returns. So what we do, instead of qualifying you off your personal income, we qualify it off the property. So as long as the property reaches a um, debt service coverage ratio of one to one, meaning you know your net uh, profit per month covers the monthly payment, you're good to go. That's what that's what we would use. Okay, so that that was like a like a mouthful, but the commercial loan part uh, that I was trying to hint at, that's that's powerful because like, it's like you're not basing it off my income anymore. Like, no. is it like a debt, like the debt income ratio? Is that is that what you guys call it or something like that? Yeah, debt service coverage ratio. Well, like, I guess what I'm saying is like, uh, as long as, as the income can cover um, the freaking mortgage. Right. Yeah. I think we're talking. I think you were talking like one something. One to one. Uh, yeah. One to one. So that's that's pretty cool because I mean, those guys. I think uh, normally it's like one point two five or something. Right. So explain explain what that is because it was it was kind of hard. It <laughs> took me like it took me like <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. But it took me like like a, two years just to you know understand that point. But I mean, when you when you and I were talking about it earlier, I'm like, oh, dude, that makes sense. Can you explain that part? Yeah, yeah. So so I try to make it as simple as possible. Basically, whatever you net per month, right? Whatever you net per month. Let's say, for example, the the, the monthly payment for the mortgage is like 2000 a month, right? And if you can net 2000 a month in your rental, then your income's good. It's solid. It's covered. That's like, that's, that's cool. Because uh, you just look at the numbers, so... So it's really easy, kind of easy. So for you guys, if you if you're looking to do like an Airbnb, you can kind of just pull up what the market is doing. So if the market, 
for that particular house is making two thousand. Uh, um, I guess you can do it per you know per month, or you can kind of just do a quick analysis on that market and say how much is it making for that particular house, that particular bedroom. If it comes out two thousand, that already already meets the requirements for yeah. it, you know. So uh, if we say, I guess, how would you do? Normally, when when I did mine, it was like one point two five, so it would be like twenty. So it would be like twenty five, twenty five hundred that I would have to meet. So you were actually there. Your requirements are a lot lower because it was only a, a debt service uh, of what one to one, right? Right, right. Yeah. So it's just it just has to cover the payment or equal to the payment. Like if it's above, if it's at one point two five, yeah, it's like what you said. It's an additional five hundred bucks over the mortgage, right? And yeah, and some of them go go to one point five, right? And some lenders require one point five, and oh. uh, you know. Or, yeah, it, it's yeah, yeah. tough. Um, you know, it's 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 cool because um, what it does do is it uh, removes all the properties that you don't make money on, right? Yeah. So you know you're gonna make money on these things, um, and so when you go in, you want to make sure that it covers the debt, and as long as it covers the debt, you're solid, man. Absolutely. You like so the strategy is like. Um, when you when you're trying to get a loan, you want a, the least amount of obstacle to try to get that loan, right? Yeah. So what what Johnny's saying is, you know, they're really like there's less obstacles to jump over to get this loan. So right now, I mean, these deals are like going crazy, right? People are making coffers like crazy. So to get these deals, and if you if you're still if you're having to fight with the with the loan person on it, you know. You say, hey, you know, I got to meet these numbers and all that. Dude, that's just going to kill your deal. I mean, when, when the seller looks at it and goes, oh, man, yeah, these guys are investors. You know, they, they're they probably going to weigh it out and say, should I pick this guy or not? So, and then you still have to fight to get that loan approved. So that's a big point, a uh, big part. If when you, if you're an investor, you're constantly fighting with, <laughs> with, with all these guidelines, these layovers yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of what me and Johnny are talking about, right? Johnny? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So, so, uh, so, so, tell me the process, right? So, I know we just started. Um, so, I'm I'm looking at a one million dollar deal. Uh, you already gave me the debt service coverage on that. It just needs to meet. Let's just say, in this case here, two thousand. I think it'll probably be like what for a million dollar. Probably be like what four thousand something. I'm thinking that I just have um, to meet if we do the math right. <clears throat> You know, let me let me check. I got a calculator here, real quick. <laughs> and then I think uh, it just goes once once. I mean, there there's not that much overlay or I guess uh, obstacles to go through. And then and then I think you just need to meet. You guys do appraisals, right? That it has to yeah. it has to be an appraisal. Okay. Yeah. So that that's about five thousand eight hundred, right? Okay. Um, yeah. From uh, principal and interest, right? Um, cause, cause these loans are 30 year fixed, right? So, um, about 5,800, um, per month. Um, and yeah, so the, the, the process is, so you got the application in the appraisal comes in and the, our appraisals, they actually go out there and they determine what the, uh, debt service coverage ratio is, right? So they'll look at the income, they'll look at the value. And as long as you got 20% down, the value comes in where it needs to be uh then it's just waiting for closing i mean uh before like so once typically the process is is that once you you give me your um your uh documentation for down payment and you give me your credit score then yeah. what i'll do is i'll pre-approve you right and say that you got you got the money for the down payment you got um your credits where it needs to be and then you get, we actually get you in contact with a, a realtor within specific areas that you want to buy. And so, um, and if, if, assuming you don't have a realtor yet. So yeah, we have a team of realtor in Tennessee, for example, that knows the area, knows what the numbers look like, knows how to make sure you buy something that's profitable. And then uh, they'll actually take you out there and then you'll put an offer in. Right. So that process is actually pretty, pretty complicated, complicated because right now in Tennessee, it's super busy. Right. 
So you're going to need someone that can actually get you in the house before you actually get in the house, before it comes on the market so that you can actually make an offer on the day it comes out on the market. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, cool. Uh, so, so you guys have questions, go ahead and comment below. Uh, I was just, uh, so Vaughn just said, Hey, how many states can you guys, can you provide service for Johnny? Yeah. So this product, uh, we can actually provide it nationwide. The only two states that we can't do is Nevada and California. Okay. All right. Uh, that was probably like the worst state to do them. <laughs> <laughs> so it wouldn't matter anyways. <laughs> so, um, all right. So there were, you guys got questions, go ahead and comment below here. Let's see. All right, let's do a second one. Uh, can, you do, can you do one Fresno? I, I guess that's, we just answered that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. That was a good part. Was, I can prove one. Yeah, there we go. So I think we kind of, uh, sounds like a product for those looking to scale who can prove rental income already, right? And, and 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 you get that from the appraisal, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, um, I think to to answer that question a little better, right? So we have products like right now. One one of our products is, um, in in and this is only in Tennessee right now. One of our products is you can go in ten percent if you don't have any homes in the area. You can go in ten percent and buy one of the properties. So it's actually ten point zero one percent, right? You can go in. You can buy a second home in that area and then you can start your portfolio so you can get an idea of what you're doing. So if you're a beginner, um, like right now we're we're working towards getting our Florida license. And so that would be a big deal to all the newbies. Um, you want to go in trying to do it as a second home, 10 percent down. Um, of course, the, this product has a lower rate. Right. So we go to about four percent and um, on a 30 year fix. Right depending on your FICO, of course, right? And then um, you get in, you learn the system, and then when you're ready to scale, we move you to the other product, which is an investor product, yeah. Oh, okay. I guess we can talk about that later. Uh, yeah, well, let's talk, let's finish that. So how do you, what other product would go right after that? Well, so to, to the investor product where, where you do the cash flow. So this would be like a like a short term rental loan. So we product, have right? the so the the first the um the first product we talked about was the we call it the investor cash flow product, right? Yeah. And then we have our normal traditional products too. So the normal our normal traditional products is actually better than a lot of other people's, and um, the traditional product allows you to buy a second home for the newbies, right? Uh, and do business within that second home area. So, so let, let me give you an example, Chai. So let's say right now all of your businesses are in Florida, right? And you decide that you want to buy something out in Tennessee. Well, if this is your first home in Tennessee, right? And um, you plan right. on using it as a, as a uh, second home as well, then yeah. we can actually do that transaction as a second home. You only put 10.01% down. Wow. Will qualify you that 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 product will qualify you off of your income right yeah so wow. we'll qualify you through the normal process and get you in the house and then that way you can start your process of uh doing your um kind of your short-term rentals within yeah. that area with as as little down as possible and then when you're ready to go investor mode in that area then we would move you to the in investment cash flow product that we initially talked about so you would be modifying that loan? No, we won't modify it. Um, that that loan will be kept on that second okay. home. It's for the the coming properties. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So, yeah. oh, okay. All right, cool. So that kind of answers what Leo was saying. It says, do you do residential also? Yeah. So you would do, you know, residential, and then after you get your after you get your residential home, you go to the Airbnb product right yeah and we'd be yeah. a loan product and then uh you know because it would be kind of hard to get another traditional loan i guess to yeah buy it, would, it would be <laughs> trust me i know guys trust me <laughs> typically they'll require you 25 percent down with the uh yeah. 1.25 um debt coverage ratio right that service coverage ratio and johnny and, and, and we were talking earlier i know johnny blew through this really quick <clears throat> but he said 
ten percent down. That's that's really rare. You know, you're normally twenty percent down. You know, yeah. he's saying ten percent. So I guess he's you're saying that that's coming down the road, right? For Florida, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, we're I don't hoping know. by next week, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we already sent all the documents to the state. So if I was looking to buy a one million dollar property like the beach house, I was kind of eyeballing. You know, instead of putting twenty percent, I was two hundred thousand. I just put a hundred thousand down, guys. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And get a million dollar property appreciation on that would be yeah. crazy good for you. Oh, it's just how you guys, just how you think to do. Do you want to drop to, like another hundred thousand dollars if you didn't have to? You know. So yeah, it's okay to wait another week. Hopefully, they get that cleared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So I mean, that's it, right? <clears throat> that's pretty much. You know, it, you made it pretty simple. I mean, there's not much to this. There's not that much restriction. You know, as long as the appraisal goes out and it it confirms that you. The property is making enough money, and we were talking about what forty-eight was it forty-eight hundred or fifty-eight hundred, right? Fifty-eight, yeah, fifty-eight hundred, eight for a million-dollar property. Yeah, so fifty-eight hundred. So I did the math, and then that was like if if it was an Airbnb per day. So I divide that into thirty days, so that makes it like almost two hundred dollars a night for a for a beach house. That's really low. Those beach house is usually a, like. You know, four hundred dollars. Four hundred, yeah. Four, four yeah, fifty. So, so, yeah. So let's just do four hundred. Just be unconservative, right? Four hundred, four hundred times thirty days. You know, so that's twelve thousand. You know, that's crazy. Twelve thousand. So you minus the loan. <laughs> the loan is like what? What? Fifty eight hundred. So you're yeah. still pocketing like six thousand two hundred you know and then let's just say you know your power whatever let's just say you take three thousand off that you know just be like crazy i don't know if anybody can spend three thousand and worth of power and water bill but you're still left with three thousand dollars per month on that so that's that's how you, you analyze that guys that's that's pretty much it so i just i just kind of did the math for you guys just kind of like a little quick overhead and i'm like dude it's a go on this you know, yeah, this is you like, get someone in, they buy two, and most people could probably retire. Like the average person, most average people could retire off of two. <laughs> well, you become instant millionaire pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with you're leveraging like a hundred thousand to buy a million dollar property, right? Yeah. You, you're pretty much an instant millionaire if you guys don't know, you know. So <laughs> these are the nuggets, man. These are the gold nuggets. If you can take this information and make it work. <laughs> I know we kind of blew. I knew we kind of blew through it, but if you guys caught that, you know, hopefully that raises an eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easy math right there. So, uh, yeah. So that's what me and him were talking about. You know, there's not that much, and I'm like, I'm really excited just to like uh, get this going because because every time when I was looking at a deal, I'm like, oh, 20 twenty percent down, twenty percent down. So if I look at three hundred thousand, twenty percent down, so I'm like. That's like what uh sixty thousand that you know i'm like oh my gosh yo like if johnny can just say hey uh ten percent down i'm like holy cow thirty thousand that's half you know yeah uh that's you know I, and i can use that to buy another property and just you know multiply my deals quickly you know yeah. so that's just the logic um you know if you guys have any questions you know let's go through the questions here do you see me there you uh you see me there that that kind of jumps out. Uh, so there, there's a question on uh, multifamily units. We can do up to eight units, right? Okay. Um, oh, okay. And then right let's here. see here. Uh, you can uh, two guys. You can buy forty nine second homes and then other forty nine with ten percent down each. <laughs> We can try it. <laughs> we can try it. If you're willing to go through it. I'll try it with you. <laughs> Holy cow, too. That's, I mean, it sounds cool, but the managing part is crazy because you... <laughs> you're going to have to have a pretty good property manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh... And welcome. Hey, looking forward, uh, Johnny. So you guys have questions, comment, comment below. So 
um quite comment guys uh we'll, we'll continue to i got a few more questions for you um hey so uh you see the rate was like what five something five point six five point six 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 right and then the fed goes hey you know did you did you catch what the fed was talking about today as far as uh rate heights yeah that they're gonna try to trickle it up yeah so what does that mean i mean as an investor what, what is that <laughs> <laughs> that that means affordability is going to start to come down and that means that when rates go up so i had a calculator earlier right yeah and uh the calculator said that um like right now if let's say if you got three percent loan right and you were buying something you could probably get something in the five hundred thousand dollar range for the same price as if you had to go up to five percent um if you went up to five percent it would come down to um uh, probably approximately like uh three hundred and sixty thousand so that's the difference right in in price range you can buy more house when the rates lower so right now if you guys want to buy million dollar properties and we know that all the million dollar properties are increasing in value right now they're not going down Absolutely. like the ones that are going down are the ones that are like maybe one hundred twenty thousand, right that, that yeah. property value is going to be probably going down. Like if the market hits wrong, it's going to go down, but the million dollar properties are always going to be continuing to go up. And with that being said, um, uh, you're gonna, you're just going to make more money. Right. At the end <laughs> of the day. Right. So I think, uh, the reason why we, I kind of focusing on the million dollar properties and why is that? Why you guys, why should I just keep talking about the million dollar property is it, it's, I think I was listening to like one of the one of the podcasts from like bigger pockets or something. And and uh I think they were like uh, the biggest tip, like somebody asked them, like, what was the biggest tip like to these guys, these professional guys, right? And they're like, um, if you had to go back, you know, what would you do different? <clears throat> and the guy goes, What I would do different is I would go to like the most buy like the most expensive, whatever it is uh and the best market you know so it's all about location i will say you know it's all about location and you know and when you go to the best locations they're like they're probably like the most expensive right because yeah. those are the only ones that will probably appreciate like faster so so out of the all the the i guess the the panel they're asking like all the experts and like yeah that's what they would do right to go to yeah. like buy the expensive stuff and in, in in result of that they will appreciate so they'd be worth more even more if if price was to increase so i mean i don't know about you guys but if you guys think about your your property right now would, would you think that it would increase in the next few years i would think so right yeah. so so that's why i'm kind of targeting like not just small property like small price property now i'm kind of targeting like the really expensive ones so uh that's kind of where I've, i was going with that so uh so so yeah so 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 what's your take you think they're going to increase the rates in the next I guess, I guess they were talking about like next year right they were talking about next year and the following year right so not so much this year i think some some of the guys that um i pay attention to they were talking about maybe uh at the end of this year they're going to start the rate hike but I'm going to say that the likelihood is that if they do, right, if they do, um, by March, it'll probably come back down. Um, and then maybe over the next year and then into the following year, they might hike it up a little bit. But um, typically rate hikes means that there's more money out there, right? There's more money um, and they want to make more money off of it. And so you're going to see the stock market uh, go up and you're going to see people with more cash and uh, more people that willing to buy right so my thoughts are is that um and that's just my opinion right my opinion is that um it's the market's still gonna stay hot man like i, I i've been paying attention to i know out here uh, our our homes stay on the market for 12 days and i know that i checked i checked right before we got on and the market out there is nine days so <laughs> how's brooklyn that going park, really fast brooklyn park in, in in brooklyn park it's 12. in oh, okay, Polk yeah. county in orange county where you are it's nine yeah. days <laughs> okay <laughs> maybe that's why i can't find any deals <laughs> right exactly <laughs> all right we'll jump to another question here 
I think you're saying so the appraisers will appraise the property as a short term and use that short term number and not the long term number. Uh, it depends in the area. It, it depends in the area. So if the area has a lot of short term, then yes, we will use the short term. But if the area doesn't have any short term, then there's just we got to use whatever is there. And so we would use a long term. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. How about this one here? Max loan amount on this commercial product. I mean, it, it's not really commercial, right? It's, it, yeah, it's not a commercial. It's a hybrid. It, yeah. Um, right now, if I remember correctly, we don't have a max. Wow. So, like, I, I think that um, to be safe, I'll say two million. But check back with me um, when I get a chance to take a look at my numbers. I'm pretty sure yeah. we can go higher than two million. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Uh. There's a minimum though. There's a minimum. You got to have the house has to at least appraise for 150 and yeah. the loan amount has to be <laughs> at least a hundred thousand dollars. You're not finding those anymore. Are you finding those? Right. <laughs> you're, you're an awesome investor than I am. <laughs> uh, what do you think about this? Do you remember putting investment homes in the LSC? This might be a legal, legal question, but uh, I'll, I'll just have your opinion on it. Yeah, yeah. So my, my opinion is uh, if you can, yeah, you should. I think if you can and you know how to put it into an LLC, just do it properly and then uh, you should uh, just for uh, safety reasons. Um, All right, cool. Uh, we're doing a little fire round questions here, guys. So you got those of you guys are just joining in. So can came a little late. Can this be saved? Yeah, we can. Yeah, this uh, we save this video uh, onto the site. Uh, and I think here, Chang goes, "Hey, what's your Facebook? Or how? We'll get that to the end. How about that? Yeah. Cool. That sounds um, good. See, your most high unit. Uh, how many years? Oh, do you, how many years you guys amortize your the eight unit stuff? Is it thirty? The same? Thirty. Thirty okay. years. Yeah, the same." There you go, too. Uh, see, this is Twa. Is that, are we able to use secondary home loan terms on the multi units? Does that, does that make sense to you? I'm going to say no for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, mean? I don't know what that means, but if you're saying no, that you understand that question. <laughs> yeah, I guess the, the thought behind it is that, you know, if, you, if you're buying, like, let's say um, you decide to go out to Tennessee and buy a property out there as a second home, right? And it's a multi-unit. It would be kind of tough for us to do it as a, like, especially if you're an investor already, it'd be kind of tough for us to do it as a second home. Is it possible? Like I said before, we can try, but it's going to depend what the, what the underwriters say, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah kind of laughable I, I know what they're trying to do there <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> all right so um i mean i i put down like what would happen right because if the rate goes up that means that I, just picking back on what we talked about if the rate goes up what happens again the rate goes up i guess it costs more right so yeah it's best just to get in now right what's what's the current oh your current rate is 5.66 for any score of 70 720 will be or higher right yeah like what if i got an 800 does that still change 800 score credit score um it would change but not significantly like okay it, maybe an eighth or something like that um your your fico does does matter right so if your fico is lower lower than 720 it's gonna be a different rate um i'm giving it based off the 720 and then if you're gonna be high, a little higher we might be able to uh to have a little bit more um more room to be able to move your rate up but the the likelihood is that um the 5.66 is 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 pretty standard um and so it, it won't it won't move too much from that that number um but it's also going to depend on the time right because rates could change any any in any day right tomorrow might be a different rate so um you just have to get in and <clears throat> once you get the contract we can lock it in and I know we're just talking about investments here. We're not talking about like um, just your residential stuff that you buy just so you can live in. We're talking. This is more of, a, of an investor type of show, right? Like just yep. what we're talking about here. So if you're an investor, uh, the more the most important thing right now is finding that deal because there's like no deals out there. So if you can find that deal, lock that deal in. Who cares? You know, because that that rate is getting written off, right? 
it's yeah. kind of like it's like it's like an expense so you can write that off as part of your taxes so it really yeah. you know at this point uh it really doesn't doesn't quite matter it does quite it does matter a little bit on your cash flow side you know what you're pocketing in but at this point uh it's just trying to find that deal and lock it in so yeah um oh uh peter says i, I had a buyer bought a something in april vacation rental home okay and sold it in september made 140k profit in six months <laughs> location appreciation <laughs> yeah 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 uh i can say to peter that peter uh was one of my agents when i first bought my rental and when we bought it like three years ago uh it's double the amount so nice uh, uh, yeah so uh I, six months 140k i i would believe it so. <laughs> uh let's see here bow says does your company have realtors in other states you you guys are more of a loan company are right? you not yeah we're a loan company but we partner up with uh they're called the short-term rental uh, group uh you know a short-term rental shop right so we're the mortgage shop and uh, we partner up with the short-term rental and uh shop and they're based in tennessee but they have realtors in uh florida in the panhandle area um and i think uh uh they will be making additional brokerages in the carolinas and so um that's kind of where our realtors are based out of gotcha gotcha and do you guys need you know any moan agents reach out um in my group the moan real estate investors group there's plenty of uh realtors in there so there's a ton yeah i'm, I'm a realtor out in uh, minnesota so <laughs> okay yeah so, yeah, so. so. <laughs> you need a house in minnesota i can i can hook you up yeah help a brother <laughs> out or help a sister out you know <laughs> right right uh we'll, we'll, uh last question here right so two goes and may have missed it but what states can you lend right because he needs california minnesota and florida right i think california you say you don't right yeah no california yeah. no nevada okay yeah so um yeah so that goes toward you know that's you know, we're kind of wrapping up here you know that's cool man um so i know uh we just you and i were talking about we'll, we'll probably touch base offline uh when i find that deal Absolutely. i did yeah i did i did have a deal and then I fell through so i'm like all right so uh once i find another one i'm probably gonna reach out to you and we talk about you know what to do next um but as far as you guys that want to that are looking to invest uh i think airbnb right now airbnb is pretty much the way to go to make quick money right now so um that's just me I was, <clears throat> yeah i mean i have a multi-unit it's slow money um uh, but there's more managing on this side you know so if you want to make more money fast you're going to have to work a little bit harder on the airbnb side and uh, that's kind of why I'm paying more attention because I'm going to make fast money. So, and that's kind of the re reason why Johnny did a little post earlier. I, mean, I reached out to him and I'm like, dude, this is amazing stuff that you're, so I figured we bring on here just so you guys can kind of get an idea of what I'm asking him. Uh, and it's really, I mean, it's easy, right? I mean, there's not much, you know, to this. So, uh, if you guys want to reach out to Johnny, if you're looking to do some sort of like an Airbnb business or just to invest with a long-term uh, Johnny, Probably has a good product to uh to show you how to do it you know or to help you out so uh john how do people get a hold of you yeah so uh you can email me at johnny at mortgage shop.co or you can uh, hit me up in facebook uh it's a uh, not not ja johnny bang so it's a uh, n-o-m t-s-a and then johnny j-o-h-n-n-y bang just hit me up on facebook you got questions reach out um we're here to help the community right um while and, and make money while, while we're doing it so the hopes is uh we can we can get everybody to a, a good spot and that so yeah cool cool so i'll put all that information in the in the show notes as well so if you guys uh are driving and stuff like that <laughs> come back to it or just go back and listen to the show so yeah. johnny appreciate you coming on the show um one last question we asked all our our, all our guests that comes on there is if you had a billion dollars <laughs> what's the first two things you would do with it 
You know, I the the first thing I do is I probably um I don't know if you ever seen the the show The Profit. Yeah, yeah. Like he goes, yeah, he goes and he invests his money into other businesses. That's probably yeah. what I would do and transform them and make them better. And then uh, the second thing I would do is uh, probably donate, man. I probably donate a lot of the money to the different communities that need it to help support people. That's probably what I do. Awesome, man. That, yeah. That's that's the way to go. You know, multiply that money so they take care of you first, and then yeah. and then you can take care of others. So, absolutely, awesome, bro. So, guys, give Johnny a thumbs up for coming on the show. I uh, appreciate you coming, Johnny. Um, yeah, so just, just give him a few thumbs up. So, just so we appreciate that Johnny came on. <clears throat> and if you guys have any questions, uh, just reach out to Johnny. He's in Minnesota. Um, and it doesn't really matter because he, he does all that stuff, you know, throughout the U.S. as yep. far as helping people out with loans. And then, you know, if you guys have any, uh, if you guys have anybody want, that you want me to interview, let me know. Just uh, just message me. Love to uh, – looking for other people to interview um and until then guys uh have a good night and keep hustling all right, all right. thanks johnny peace bye guys